Hello everyone. Welcome. Today's training. It's all about having days when things are not going your way. Having days when you want big things and you are not sure if you're going to get the damn things you want. So today I'm going to be talking about the messaging and the energetic principles that help you attract things with precision, meaning clients, meaning real estate. I'm going to tell you a story about how that happened. I'm going to teach you those messaging and energetic principles that are really going to help you communicate your desires with a lot more precision, get into the world of the person you're speaking to in a way that is actually going to help them feel you and see you and trust you. And I'm going to share how I've been been applying this to my life right now and how it's helped me attract literally so much in the midst of a lot of transitions. I just moved to a new city. It's a lot going on. So we're going to get started with these lessons. I want to keep this short, but there's so much goodness that I don't want to be skimpy. And you know that I love giving you all of the value. So if you're watching on Facebook, say what's up. If you're watching on Instagram, say what's up. Where are you tuning in from? I want to see your comments rolling in just to make sure that you guys can hear me. Facebook, can you hear me? Tell me, can you hear me? Just give me a yes in the comments because I'm using an external situation and I don't know if it works. I don't know if it's working. Okay, so while I wait for your responses, here's what I want to tell you. This live stream is not going to be helpful if you are the type of person that wants everything in life or thinks that everything in life needs to go smoothly. This is for you if sometimes you feel lonely, if you feel like things are not going your way, if you wish you knew what is it that needs to change in order for you to be able to attract more clients, in order for you to be able to communicate your message more clearly, not just to your audience, but also to the people in your life, also to the people. Okay, great, great. I'm seeing all the yeses. Awesome, awesome. Also to the people that you want to create partnerships with, the people that, let's say you're a landlord. I'm going to tell you the story about how this happened, and I'm going to give you the four principles today. And let me adjust my camera here because I can literally see. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you a story. I moved. Okay, I see you, Emily. Awesome. I moved to LA. And these are stories you're going to hear in your life. You probably think about, think about a lot of stories and tell me in the comments. When it comes to the thing you want in life, whether it's business, whether it is moving to a new state, whether it is love, whatever it is, but in this, in this context, life, business, what are some of the stories that people tell you that limit what you are able, able to create? For example, here in uh, California, moving to LA, this is, a t- this is a time where there's not a lot of inventory where it's really hard to find a good house with what you want. Um, and that, you know, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of, a lot of competition in the market. Yes, Emily, I'm going to channel all of the truths. There's a lot of competition in the marketplace, in the, in the area. So, so, you know, when I wanted to move here, I wanted to go from La Jolla to, to LA and I wanted to, I had, I was very precise in what I wanted to create. I wanted to move into a home that was near the ocean or oceanfront ideally, but I didn't even imagine that that, I was like, wow, that might be too much of a request. I wanted to have a landlord that was kind, that was generous, that was easygoing. I wanted to live near my friends. I wanted a lot of specific things. And the stories that I kept on hearing was, it's too hard, It's, it's not the right time. You might have to settle for something different. You might have to settle for something else. Tell me in the comments, give me a yes if you have had people recently or in your life who tell you, I need to, you should just settle, settle for what you can get right now. Just settle, you know, settle for that. Or even they don't even say the word settle, but they say the word, the word like that might be a little hard. It might be a little hard to be able to create that. It might be a little hard. So maybe like you should do this instead. Give me a yes in the comments if you have felt that or if somebody has ever told you that. 
because I want everyone here to know that you're not alone in your desire, in your search, in your journey to create what is unreasonable. Let's talk about clients. Who here has heard the word, people don't have money right now. People, maybe you should, uh, you know, you should charge less because people right now don't have a lot of money. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying that. And they've said it for many times, many years, many, many times before. So what is important is that you recognize first, everything that people are telling me is just their interpretation of reality. That's what is going on. Their interpretation of the of reality, the reality they're living in is that in which they have that limitation. So for me, when it came to find my house, I had to step out of the reality of my friends. I had to step out of the reality of my of people that were telling me that I couldn't have what I wanted. And I had to stand in a reality where I could have the house that I wanted. I could have it in the time frame I wanted it because I needed it within a period of 30 days. Like it was very specific. And I had to stand in the reality that I could have it in the terms that I wanted to have it. And that is not an easy thing to do. It's not easy for you to stand in a reality that most people don't stand in. It's easy to stand in their reality and go and say, oh, yeah, I, I opt in for that. Oh, maybe it is too hard. Or sometimes maybe it's just your own reality, right? Yeah, Emily says lots of times uh, from small decisions to large decisions, right? We get told what we should want, what we can have, what we are allowed to have, what is possible to have. And in my life, being a Latina woman, coming from a place, from a background where none of this was possible, having, being an immigrant for, you know, having three passports, traveling to 52 countries, you know, having a dream where it seemed like I was absolutely ridiculously crazy and delusional and actually having the life that I want now, having the coaching business that I want now, I have learned a thing or two about what it means to energetically and how to, mess, from a messaging perspective, create desire, create alignment, and create opportunity where people see none. Where people don't see opportunity, I see opportunity. And I surround myself with people that have even a bigger vision, a bigger view of what opportunity, uh, where opportunity is. Where I'm like, oh, there's, there, that seems like an obstacle. I don't know if I, I don't know if that's the vibe. And they see opportunity. So it's important. Before I give you the four principles, I want to tell you that it's so important that you surround yourself with people that are able to see beyond what you're able to see, that are able to sit and tell you to your face, yes, you can do that. I'm not bullshitting you. Here are some of the obstacles, but here's how you can overcome that or here's what you need to face in order to go beyond that. That's what I do for my clients. They tell me I want to charge this, this much. I'm like, okay, let's fucking go. And they raise their rates and they double their rates and they attract clients at that level. And they're like, nobody in my life has ever been a supporter of me doing this. Nobody ever, to people told me that I was crazy raising my prices right now. Like I had a client who literally was charging $4,000. Rachel, I've shared about her a little bit recently. Was charging like four or five thousand dollars for her package, and now she charges ten. She's closed like she had a seven thousand dollar month as a stylist last month, styling coach. And she's like, no one ever told me that what I wanted was possible. Everybody said you need to shrink it. You need to uh, just be more considerate. No, 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 no. And there's a lot of that in the world, and a lot of people in the world are going to be telling you that in this corner of the world, you will not find that. You will not find that in me. I am never going to tell you that what you want is not possible. But I'm going to be very honest about what are the what is what are some of the obstacles that you might come across in getting what you want and it's all going to be ways in what it's all going to be in your mind it's all going to be in your heart and it's going to be in just what you're energetically available for right so let me tell you the story about let me tell you the four principles so i'm going to you, tell your principles in a storytelling way so that you actually understand how it works and you can apply it and this, I apply for client attraction. And this, I apply for getting anything that I want in life. I apply for getting tables uh, where there are reservations are full. I apply for getting um, tickets for things that are sold out. I apply it for uh, when things are, anything that you want, where it seems like there's an obstacle, there's a no, there's a, there's a limit, there's a closed door. This is what I do, okay? All right. 
who's enjoying this so far who is receiving the downloads i know i see emily loving it thank you so much for commenting and just like really absorbing what's going on because in this time you guys we need more expanders and i feel responsible for coming out here because that's what i am i'm an expander for your vision i'm an expander for what you think is possible and this is why i expanded my life in such a way and it has not been easy it hasn't been rainbows and butterflies and so this is the first thing that i want to say that if you are waiting or if you think that you need to be in a high vibe state in order to attract what you want i want to give you the relief and the and the like i just want you to like melt wherever you're at breathe into it and hear me say you do not need to be high vibe and have the perfect energetic frequency to get what you want you just don't you don't you don't at all i have uh, me and my clients are clear examples of this i'll tell you i'll tell you this so many times i have been in feeling all the negative emotion that is that is like literally not meant to be aligned with manifestation. All the negative emotion, doubt, um, whatever it is that you feel, anxiety, um, whatever it is that might come up for you, right? And in those moments, when, you're, when people say, oh, you know, you need to be high vibe in order to do that, it's hard. It's forceful. You, 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 you can't uh, force a feeling instantly. You can bridge into the feeling and you can elevate your emotional state, but it has to be done with care, with gentleness and with love. And yes, it can be done in a moment. And yes, you can decide that you can feel differently in just a moment. Sometimes, sometimes you won't be able to. And so the idea that we just get to shift our energetic state instantly, it's not available sometimes. And you don't need to be in the perfect energetic state in order to attract what you want, to attract the clients. You can be going through a a death in the family, a breakup. You can be going through shit with your team as a CEO. You can be going through people, maybe some clients that are canceling their contracts. Maybe you can be going through you're so busy in your schedule that you're like, how can I even attract any more people? You can be going through so much in your business and in your life. And that doesn't mean that you're not eligible or you're not, you're not approved for attracting what you want. You can be in a anxiety you can have anxiety you can be a human this is what it means to be human we're not trying to be enlightened beings in the human plane like that is the that that, that is like the contradiction we are we are here to be human and we are here to meet our, our humanness and to work with our humanness to be a match for what we want without making ourselves wrong for having to be in a perfect godly state at all times in order to attract it so that's the first thing that I want to offer. You don't need to be feeling perfect feelings in order to attract what you want. So I was going through a lot this past month. I needed to find a place in LA. I wanted to, and I had one day, you guys, I had one day to find this place. One day because I was sick for like 12 days in January. It was our heart. I got, I got one of those, you know, the one, you know, the one that puts you out. I got that. Um, and then I had one day in LA before I had to go back to La Jolla and I had so five houses now competitive market every single person was outbidding each other and getting you know making cash offers whatever and just being crazy I saw this beautiful ocean front home that it was like the fourth home that I went to see it's like the most magical place it's one of those places that you walk past you know when you go to like cities and they have like beachfront houses and you're like I wonder who lives there and I wonder what they do for a living. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's like, who the, what the fuck is going on? Like, who? What do you have to do in order to live there? And I was like, okay, well, let's see. Turns out, I go into the house. I mean, I, I, I'm getting a tour. I'm like, I'm feeling it in my body. This is an up level. It's way more than I've ever paid before. And I am a homeowner myself. So I already have a mortgage. I already own property in, in, in another place I, in Cabo. I have multiple properties. And this is the most that I would pay in rent. So it felt like an elevation. It felt like an expansion. It felt like what really? But it felt like, oh my God, this is the next level. This is my expansion. Now, the thing is, why would they want to rent it to a single girl instead of like a family and maybe a guy that has a big business, big, I don't know. Why would they want to rent it to me as opposed to all the other applicants, right? 
why would somebody, why would a client want to choose you amongst all the other coaches in the world? Why would they want to choose you? Why you? Why you? So you start getting in your head about it. Like notice how these principles are always the same for anything you want, but I'm giving it to you in life and client attraction. Why would anyone want you? And think about it. Why would anyone want you? Your brain, the moment that you are like, oh my God, that's a client. That's the type of client that I want to work with. Your brain is going to say, why the fuck would they want me? <laughs> this is like, they already have a good life. They might not even need me. They might not even have problems to hire me for, right? Like this is what your brain says. And this is where we lower our standards. This is what we go for less than what we want because we're like, well, maybe it's too much for me. Maybe it's too big. Maybe it's like I don't deserve it. Maybe maybe I need to work my way up there. Maybe I need to just like wait, just hold off a little bit. And and the moment that I walked into that house, I was like, oh, my fucking God, this is it. This is it. Uh, I, oh, oh, shit, is this it? Oh, my God. The house wasn't perfect. It wasn't, you know, like it wasn't perfectly modern but he's breach front right on the sand. I mean, I'm telling you, it's like just amazing. And I'm going to do a retreat with my clients there. The upcoming cohort of the Magnetize and Monetize Mastermind is going to get a free VIP retreat with me at my house because I just want to warm up, do a housewarming party with my clients. Like who better to do it with than my clients? So if anyone, this is the last day, tomorrow is the last day to apply, by the way, for the Magnetize and Monetize Mastermind. In three months, I help you clarify your message to attract premium clients. I teach you these energetic principles so that you can get, really, we focus on client attraction, but every area of your life, if you look at my client testimonials, everything just up levels for life, like permanently. So that's what we do in three months. This is the last day to apply. Tomorrow is the last day to apply. We already have an amazing cohort. People are getting so excited. They're already shifting, attracting. It's, it's just amazing. So make sure you go and apply. But let me continue with the story. I knew this was it. I knew this was the home. It felt like an up level. So imagine for you, if you want to raise your prices, you'll be like, oh my God, I want to attract this caliber of client and I want to raise my price to this much. Like who the fuck am I to have this? Who the fuck am I to... Can I do it? For me, it was like, can I get this house? Like, I mean, I love it, but like, is is the landlord gonna want it? Want me? Like, there's so many other applicants. Like, why would they choose me? There was this family, French family, that were the neighbors, and this guy was willing to pay for the whole year up front. And I was like, okay, well, we'll see. I put in the application immediately. I didn't hide from the process immediately. And they were like, okay. I'm going to short, I'm, I'm going to shorten the story because the story is longer and I want to give you all the principles, but I'm going to tell you what happened. And this is when it comes to the messaging. So energetically, I've been teaching you some principles so far, to, like start picking up on what I'm teaching you. You cannot, you need to remember that most people are going to tell you what, that you can't have what you want to have. You are going to tell yourself that you can't have what you want to have. You're going to want to shrink, make it smaller. And it's your job to hold the space in you for what you desire even when it feels like you don't have capacity for it, even when it feels like anxiety, doubt, crippling, whatever it is, is present, you get to hold that and you get to be with that and you still get to have room for what you desire. It doesn't, they don't need to be in conflict. Both can coexist and this is what creates like in my experience, manifestation, the way that is taught doesn't has never really worked for me The like, you got to be in high vibe energy and everything will come to you and just like whatever. I'm like, I'm a human. I have a lot of fucking, I have a lot of emotions. I stopped trying to fight my emotions. So what I have discovered, if you are like me, is that we need, we get to hold space for the anxiety, the fear, the doubt, the worry, the uncertainty that I don't fucking know if this is going to land. I don't know if people are going to. And I get to hold space for my desire and I get to be really connected and committed to get to taking the steps to create it. So in your case, if you're a coach, if you're a business owner, if you're a coach, you elevate the quality of the clients you attract, then your brain is going to be like, who the fuck are you to attract that? And then you're going to be like, great, I'm going to go and write to that client. I'm going to create content around that client. I'm going to hold the intention that people are already watching in my audience who actually would love to hire me. And I know that sounds crazy. And I know you might be like, but Juliana, I don't have the right people in my audience. Bullshit. Stop lying to yourself. This is, you know why I know that? Do you know why I'm calling you out on it? 
because you have so many people in your audience that actually are your clients, you don't see them as your clients. So the moment when either other people offer you their limited beliefs or what's available for you, maybe you should shrink it. Or the moment your brain offers you, oh, maybe I should shrink it. Or the moment that anything creates a circumstance that makes you feel like, oh, maybe I should shrink what I have. Is your job to hold the space for what you desire as well as your humanness and your inner child that is throwing a tantrum saying, we are going to die and this is never going to happen. You get to hold space for both. This is how manifestation actually works for me. I want to find a new word for manifestation because I just think that there's just a new evolution of that word. I feel like it's not really being high vibe. So I'm going to find a new word and I'm going to come up with a concept around it. But this is how we create the unreasonable. That's what it is. How we create the unreasonable. So I found this house, okay? And, and you got to follow here that the, you got to make it about you, whatever the thing it is for you, right? Like maybe for you is the clients, right? This is about clients and this is about life. This is about creating the life that you want. So for me, I'm giving you the example of the house, but I do this with client attraction too. Found the house. And then what, what happened? They chose my damn application. <laughs> They're like, the landlord likes you and they, he wants to meet you. I want to tell you this. I, this is, this is when the human commitment gets to come into place. Okay. I went, I had, a, I saw the house on a Friday and then I went back to San Diego to my house and, and I had a whole lot of, of work. Like I had a whole week of work. I get a call on Monday and they're like, the landlord wants to, wants to go ahead. And I'm like, okay, I go and, and, and I'm like FaceTime. <laughs> Let's sneak through FaceTime. Uh, turns out the landlord super old school. The landlord does not want that. The landlord wants to meet me in person. And I have been sick traveling back and forth from LA to San Diego like five times in, in a month that I've been like just, you know, whatever. And I knew that I had to do this because that was my commitment. I wanted this home. They said they were willing to meet me. So guess what I did? What would you have done? What would you have done? I, what I did is, okay, great. I just came back from San Diego, from LA. I'm going to drive again to LA because this lender wants to meet me in person. Okay. Energetic principles. I've downloaded some of uh, some here. Okay. Now let's talk about messaging. Let's talk about the messaging because I thought the lender was just going to be like, fine, you know, like, okay, nice to meet you, whatever. I'm a landlord myself. Every, every landlord is different. Okay. This is apply it to client attraction. So this is going to be for you and your client when you're in a sales call, when you're in a conversation, when you're writing to them. Okay. So I go meet this landlord and the landlord is super old school. The landlord didn't even care about my references. Didn't even care about anything. He just had a few questions. He had three questions for me. He said, he said, I want you were, you, you only lived in this, in this, in place, this, this, in that place for a couple of years. Are you planning to stay here for a while? And so I understood, this is a messaging principle. I understood that this landlord had concerns. I understood this landlord wanted to make sure we were the right fit. And he was asking questions that were kind of superficial, that were not like the rude, 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 rude question. But he wanted to know, like, what can I expect? What, is the, what, what are my expectations? Your clients are doing this too on your sales calls. Your clients, when they're scrolling through their social media, they're also thinking, like, what can I expect, right? They have questions in their minds. They're not communicating them to you maybe on social media, but when you're on a sales call with them, when you're in a conversation with them, they might ask you questions, right? So this is your, so now, what do you do? What is your, jo your job, your role? First of all, these questions are not going to be questions that you know. Your client might ask you very random questions that you had no idea. You'd be like, what? That came from left field. Like what? I didn't, I don't even know how to handle it. So you get to be so centered in your desire that this house is mine. This client is a perfect fit for me. We're meant to work together. Of course, I can help them if that's true, obviously for you. And feel it in your body and stay grounded in that desire that nothing that is yours will miss you. And that you have the ability to communicate what you want and to create connection with this person so that they feel safe in your presence. This is all about safety and trust. It's all about safety and trust. It's, it's actually more about safety than trust because trust, it's actually anyone can break your trust at the end of the day. Like 
you know, there, anyway, I don't want to go into a whole thing about trust, but it's really about creating safety. The person has to feel safe in your presence to be able to make a decision about you and about them and about their future. Okay. So he asked me how long was I going to live here? So I understood there were some concerns. And then he asked me, are you planning to have any roommates? And at the time I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I wanted to live alone or if I wanted to have like another person to share their space with. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not sure. And he's like, oh, and I saw a big hesitation coming through. This is when your client are, clients are going to give you an objection. So, or, or like a, ooh, like a response, right? And, and they're like, oh no, th that's not going to work. We, I need to know because the laws in California uh, really favor tenants. So if you have a roommate and, and we don't know about them, then that's, and they may squat here, who the fuck knows? Like, that's not going to be good for me. So messaging principle number two all right let me just say number one because this is really number one number one is get into their world okay this is what you need to do in your messaging get into the other person's world but three layers deep so here's when he said oh that's not gonna work i don't know we need to find a resolution i had to pause and not get myself all flustered about oh my god no he doesn't want it oh my god you can't get you, you have to allow yourself to let the human you be all that is inside, but you have to stay connected with the full, with the higher level, not higher level, but the, the the vision you, the vision you that knows that you got this, that this is that you you can hold space for their desires, for your desire and for the situation. That's what you. That's what's important. Your agility, your emotional agility in moments of of pressure, in moments of when, when you don't expect what's coming to you, whether it's a client giving you an, an objection or whether it's the landlord that I was so ready. I was like, yeah, I found the house. Whether it's them telling you, oh, that's not going to work. So first, I had to get into his world and, and, and I had to ask questions. So it's important that you ask questions and you understand this person has insecurities, has fears, and they are valid. They are so valid. Your client who has objections, don't get flustered when they give you objections. Be like, of course, it makes sense you have questions. It makes sense you have insecurities. It makes sense that there are things that maybe don't feel clear to you right now. It makes total sense. You would say that to yourself and you can also say that to the person. It makes total sense. It makes total sense that this is an important, this, this is a, a point of, of, of concern for you. I mean, you have this beautiful house for my landlord this beautiful house and you I want to I imagine that is really important for you to make sure that it's safe and that is in good hands so I can totally understand that this might be a huge important concern and thank you so much for sharing that with me notice what happens can somebody tell me in the comments what happens if I said that to the landlord how do you think he felt or if I say to a client when they say, oh my God, I just don't know if it's the right time, it's too expensive. If I say like, it totally makes sense that you feel that way. It's not pennies on the ground. And I can understand that right now there's a time where you're really considering this and you want to make sure that you make the right decision. So your hesitation, your, 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 your thought, your concern is really valid. And I'm so glad that you shared this with me. Can you tell me how people are going to feel like how are they going to feel in the presence of you being like not bothered by what, by, by what they're presenting you? They're going to feel safe. They're going to feel heard. They're going to feel like, oh, I can actually relax and I can trust this person because this person is not trying to manipulate me. This person is not trying to defend themselves. So here is the next step. Empathy. On, you get into their world and you go multiple layers down and, and you ask questions. Why is this important to you? What are some of the hesitations that you have? Like, what is going on in your world that, um, you know, what's, has anything happened in the past for my landlord? Has anything happened in the past that made you, that created this concern for you? I'm curious, right? Or for your client on a sales call, you can ask, like, have you ever made any investments in the past that made you feel like you are not safe right now to make that investment? right? You can ask that question. You're not trying to convince them. You're not trying to say anything. You're just asking more questions. And from that place, they're going to open up and share. 
And the final aspect that I want to share with you that was so important. I just realized that I have a call. I had a call four minutes ago. I got so into it. Oh, I always want to do these short, but I have so much to share that I want to give you guys all the juice. The last thing that I want to share that was so important for me to get this house and to attract premium clients is I said to the landlord, look, I know exactly what it feels like to be a landlord because I am one myself. I, have, I actually have a penthouse in New, in, not in New York, in Miami, and I'm a landlord myself. So I know how important it is to know that you have the right person in your corner. Um, and I want to tell you something. The reality is that the people that I surround myself with are high caliber people. And if I invite anyone to live in this house, I want to make sure for me that they are a good fit and that they're going to bring a really beautiful energy to the home. And I am going to take responsibility for being super transparent and letting you know if I bring anyone into this space as a potential roommate. Um, I share the same concerns as you as a landlord. And so I just want you to know that I totally understand your, you know, your hesitations and that you're, I'm going to take care of this place like it's my own because it really is. It will be my own. And if there's anything, how, how do you feel about that? And then you ask, how do you feel about that? Right? Like the amount of self, of trust and softening that will occur for the people, for the person on the other side, it's going to be monumental. This big man that was like really hesitant, he totally melted away. Like he's whole, all his objections, he liked me. He was like, oh, I can trust her. She's going to tell me the truth. Oh, I trust her. Like, uh, okay, yeah. And of course... I got the house and I'm moving in tomorrow and I can't wait to share with you the beauty of this next phase of life that I'm about to go on the journey of. And when it comes to your clients, the messaging principles are the same. It's about get into your client's worlds. Don't just try to defend, prove, convince, manipulate change their minds. The other option that I am offering is getting to their world, empathize, validate their experience because it makes sense that they have objections about timing. It makes sense that they have objections about money. It makes sense that the whole thing is coming out. It makes absolute sense. You've been there. You've had objections about all those things, right? Do you want to feel pushed or do you want to feel like you're being understood that somebody actually gives a fuck, right? So if you are, can stand in that place of like, I totally get it. It doesn't shake me. I still, I'm still committed to helping you. I'm still committed to supporting you. And let's make this work. Let's figure out a way. I mean, do you want to be supported? Because if you don't, then we don't need to, we can complete this conversation here. You know, I, I have no desire to convince you to work with me if you, that's not what, you, what your desire is. But do you want it? And wait and see what they say. And if they're saying yes then you can continue asking more questions because the last messaging principle that I want to give you before I go, because I'm so late to this call, <laughs> is that people are never going to tell you what's actually going through in their minds. You get to develop, and this is what I teach my clients in Magnetize, we help them develop their ability to read between the lines, to read between, to understand the client between each breath between each pause to understand what's not being spoken about what's not being said to have this understanding that the human in front of you has maybe doesn't have the courage to share with you what's really actually in the way of them investing and you get to be in the presence of that and have a conversation that opens up that possibility for you to just offer things like I'm sensing that there is some resistance and some fear, maybe some hesitation in making this investment. And, you know, as a mom, I imagine that you put yourself last or you put everyone first. And I'm just curious, is this triggering or is this bringing up anything about putting yourself first? I'm curious. How is this feeling for you? Notice the difference in tone than if I'm trying to convince somebody to make a decision, right? If I was trying to convince that landlord that I'm a good person or that I, that he, she should choose me, 
It's a different energy when you ask a question and when you and when they when the person across the room, across the line, across the whatever feels heard and understood and feels like you actually give a fuck, that they can feel safe with you. And all of that can be done in copy by you helping people feel understood, by helping people feel like you get their world without having to say like, I've been there, me too. You don't actually have to say any of that. You just get to create you just get to validate their experience. And when you validate people's experience, it's not like you're telling them you're right. You're telling them, I hear you. It makes sense that you feel that way. And from that place, you can move into a different space. Okay, I have to go to this call. But I want to remind you that this is the last day to apply to the Magnetize and Monetize Mastermind. Tomorrow is. We start next week on Monday. We already have an amazing, beautiful cohort. This program has lived for over 12 iterations at this point and is the place where you're going to, everything I shared today, you're going to be able to really deepen it in your in the practical aspect of your copy, of your messaging, of your sales, and in your life, really. I hope you clarify your message so that you can attract premium clients. And it's really... I'm going to let the testimonials speak for themselves. You can go to the link in my bio. You can go and check it out. It's all the link will, or send me a message if you have a question. If you're like, I don't know if this is right for me. Am I at the right space? I don't know. Just let's just have a conversation. I'm not attached to you joining. I'm zero attached to anybody joining. I'm committed to you getting the life that you want and creating the business that you want. So I actually don't care if you join. We already have an amazing cohort. But what I really, really want is if you're watching this, even if you watch it a month from today, two months from today, we're probably going to be running the program. Um, I want you to really know that I'm going to tell you the truth about what it really, uh, what I see. And I'm going to say it with love. And if I feel like you're the right fit, great. If I feel like you're not the right fit, I'll also be really honest and transparent and let you know. So the link is in my bio to apply. We help you clarify your message so that you can attract premium clients in the next three months, even when people tell you you can have what you want. I'm going to show you how to like bypass all of that, all of that drama, not bypass yourself, bypass all of those limitations and how to see things differently in the world so that you're able to find opportunity where most people see none of no opportunity. That's what the mastermind is all about, is really helping you articulate the value of what you do and really be able to convey it in a way where people are like, oh my God, that's what I want and I want it now. And we help you clear up all the mind drama that your conditioning has, that you have in conditioning and growing up that tells you that you can't have what you want. So if that is the vibe, if that is what the kind of space that you wanna be in, join, go to the link in my bio, apply, check out all the testimonials, go and binge in all the testimonials, they'll speak for themselves. I love you all so much. And I'm going to go to my call. I'll see you soon. Bye.